Welcome to Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Robel and on today's tips I'm going to talk about the 4043 welding rod versus the 5356. How do I identify it and a few different applications that you might use one or the other for. Let's first talk about the alloying elements in 4043 and 5356. On the 4043 rod, silicon is the alloying element. On the 5356, it's magnesium. What the magnesium does is it makes for a little bit harder, but yet a little bit more ductile, higher tensile strength rod to be used in different applications. There's so many different applications that you should refer to a chart, but I can give you a few different instances where I would use the 4043 versus the 5356. Uh, for instance, on the 4043, I'm doing a skid plate oil tank for the big KTMs. It's an integrated tank. And uh, the oil temperatures come in somewhere between 160 and 200 degrees. So because it has sustained temperatures above 150, that doesn't really make it suitable for the 5356. Uh, they say sustained temperatures over 150. Um, you should go back and use the 4043. So let's talk about another thing. Maybe I want to do a mount on an off-road car and let's say it's a 5052 H32 aluminum and I want to weld a 6061 T6 bracket to it to give it a little bit more tensile strength and keep it more rigid on the car. Um, I would choose the 5356 for that. Um, another reason to choose the 5356 on that process was is if you were going to take it and go have it anodized. The 4043 will actually show up as a dissimilar metal and it will have some, some streaking uh, through the anodizing. Um, the 5356 will show up kind of the same color as the, as the rest of the part and uh, be a nice blend for that. So you have a project and you've uh, come out and you, uh, you did some welding with some 4043 and some 5356 and uh, you burn the flags off of them and you have them laying on the table. So how do you identify two different welding rods and be able to clarify, wow, which one goes back in the hold, which holder so I know to use the right material for the right job on the next one. Well, being that uh, with the 5356, the alloying element is magnesium, that kind of to the touch makes the welding rod just a little bit stiffer. Um, it's harder to bend. It's a little bit, uh, little bit tougher, we'll call it. Um, but yet it's actually a, a more ductile um, welding rod. But what this does is uh, we can just do a kind of a quick drop test on it. With the 4043, it'll just kind of drop into a thud. 5356 will have a ring to it because it has the magnesium. It's a little bit harder. So we'll drop the first one. And then we'll drop the second one. The one that you hear is the obvious ring, and it actually does a couple more bounces, is the 5356. So that's one way to identify it. Another thing I like to do is after I get done welding, if the rod is tagged, I try not to burn off the flag. I, you know, when I pull it out for a project, I look at it. These rods that I just uh, just got are not flagged, so it's very important to either do a drop test to, to know which is which and put it back in the appropriate tube. Um, why would we put it back in the tube? Well, we want to keep our welding rods as clean as possible. A lot of times I'll do an uh, acetone or isopropyl alcohol wipe to make sure that I keep it chemically clean and get the oils from my fingers or anything off of it before I weld some. I put a little bin like this in it and then I, I put it in so it stays at the top of the tube and the next time I go to use uh, that process I'll pull this one out first, I'll use up this stick and then I'll start with another fresh stick. That's my tips for today. Thank you for watching Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Robel and I'll catch you here next time.